Because at the end of the day, you know, as we, as, as we go through some things tonight, this is what the Spirit of God, this is what Jesus came for. In John chapter 17, Jesus said this, and, and, and so I'm repeating some things that, you know, many of you have heard me say over the, over the years, but um, just listen to it with fresh ears, with a fresh heart, with fresh understanding. In John 17, as Jesus is praying, Y'all give me just a second. Uh, right now, the Spirit of God is just talking to me about a lot of things. Jennifer asked me during worship, what are you, what are you teaching on tonight? I said, I don't know. It's going to be fun to find out. <laughs> and, but I, I, but I, just, I had a sense that this was going to happen, um, that in the moment, that there would be a flow where, where we need to go. I had something that I could have gone to, but I knew that the Spirit of God was going to do this. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Father, I thank you that the words that you give me here in these next few minutes are going to be life-changing. Help bring us to see things clearly. Open the eyes of our understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. If you'll take what I'm, where we're about to go, and if you'll pay very close attention and, and just disconnect from what's been going on in your life today, just disconnect from everything that the decisions you have to make tomorrow and the decisions, you know, and, and, and the chaos that's going on around us. If you'll just kind of take a look at, you know, and let's just kind of hone in and let's just focus on this. Let's go to John chapter 17. I was going to quote, I was going to quote one scripture. And um, as we go there, we're going to, we're going to pray uh, right now for uh, a young girl's dog. Um, Nicole Harris texted me during the, and, uh, and she's been here to our church, but her, her, her precious little dog, Lucy, got attacked by a pit bull, and the, um, I don't think that the prognosis has been good, and so she asked, um, she said, would you, would you and your church pray? She said, because I know you guys have great faith. And, and so the reach out is, is to us to pray. So let's pray for Lucy right now and this little dog. God loves Nicole. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're just going to respond um, uh, to this cry for help for us just to come up as a church family and just to pray right now. And that even as we're praying, well, Father, we thank you that, that you heal this little dog. You heal Lucy. Father, cause her to recover quickly in Jesus' name. Turn the whole situation around um, in the name of Jesus. Thank you that you love Nicole so much that you would answer her prayer, that you would answer our prayers. And, Father, we receive it as done now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. It's a good deal. All right, so I was going to read one scripture from John 17, but the Spirit of God told me that we just need to, to read the, the whole thing. So let's just do it. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Shouldn't that be our prayer that we glorify the Father in everything that we do, that he gets glory in everything that we do. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given them. And this is is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent let me stop there for just a second this is eternal life not that we go to heaven not that we get to spend eternity with him but this is eternal life he says that they may know you and that word know doesn't mean know about you that, that, that word no doesn't even speak to just, you know, confessing Jesus so that he comes into your life. That word no it really is talking about an experience. You know something. Um, uh, you know, you can have knowledge about something, but then in your, in your doing it, in your living out of it, what happens is, and in your experience of a thing, what happens is, is now you know something with your whole being. Okay, so, so for instance, um, you know, you, with the, the first time that perhaps as a kid you rode a bicycle, 
um, you know, your parents told you what to do. They put you on it. They said, here's how you do. You're going to get your balance. But the fact of the matter is you could have looked at it. You could have said, hey, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. My son's famous phrase has always been, dad, I got this. You know, and I can do this and I can do it. And I'm like, you're not ready yet. And he's like, I can do it. And then he gets on there and he founds out that he can't do it. Or you found out that you couldn't ride a bike just instantly, you know, or if you did figure out how to ride a bike instantly, you couldn't figure out how to stop, right? But what happens is, is that the more that you experience it, the more that, that, that you go for it, the more that you get on the bike to ride, then now you can get on a bicycle and you can, and you, and, and you know how to ride in every part of your being no. So what's happened is move from here to now every part of you knows how to ride a bicycle, right? Well, this is what he's talking about. Eternal life comes out of this full experience with God out of a full experience with him. And we're not talking about a full experience um, on a Wednesday night. That's awesome. We're, but we're talking about a full experience every day. And so this is what he came for. You've given, he says, this is eternal life that they may know you. The only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. How do I, how do I get to that place of, of, a, of a real experience with the Father? And he says, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself and with the glory which I had with you before the world was. This is his last prayer before he was going to the cross. He said in verse 6, I have manifested your name. What name? So he's not Jehovah. He's not God. He's not El Shaddai. He's not even the great I am. Jesus gave them a new name, and that was the name of Abba. That was the name of Father. They didn't know God as Father before. They didn't think of it. So when you think about the name of a God, when you think about Jehovah or Yahweh, now you're thinking about, you're thinking about a being. You're thinking about the great I am. So there's a there, there, there's a distance, there's a disconnect, if you will. There's a between where I am and where Yahweh or El Shaddai, whatever word you want to use there. But when you start using a word like Father, what that does is it talks about relationship. Relationship. An intimate relationship. It's not about, it's not about knowing a God. It's not about serving a God. It's actually about being part of a family and that the creator of the universe literally is your father in a way that you get to experience him. Jesus said in John chapter 14, guys, I have so much happening with me right now. I'm so, I'm, I am sorry. I, I, like the Lord is showing me just, just so much. So I'm just trying to make sure that I do it in a way that makes sense to you guys. In John chapter 14, I'm not sure which verse it is, but Jesus said that, you know, like, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Now, the way that you perceive God, let's go over there and look at this for a moment. We're going to get to some activate stuff here in a moment, but this is going to set some things up. Wow, man, Father, you gave me no preview that this was going to happen. Thank you, Father. This is awesome. This, this verse literally changed my life 20-some-odd uh, years ago. It says in verse 21 of John chapter 14, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. The Amplified Version of, uh, says it this way, the Amplified Classic the person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. And then it says this, I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. Let me ask you a question. Is Jesus real to you? 
in the sense of, you know, he's there, but have you really experienced? Do you really experience him? Do you really experience the Father? Now, the way that you approach Scripture and the way that you approach the character and nature of God will determine the way that you interpret or that you read this particular Scripture because you can read it this way. The person who has my commands and keeps them or in another place where Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You can read it this way. If you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. It's like, okay, all right. So if I don't keep his commandments, I guess I just don't love him. You know, so this is what I've got to do to prove my love to God is to keep his commandments, right? And so we kind of take that, okay, so this is what I got to do mentality. Or you can take this approach to it. Here's, here's the deal. If you love me, guys, your default is going to be to keep my commandments. Your love, the love that you receive, your love for me, it's going to motivate you. It's going to motivate you. It's going to propel you. It's going to help you move into a place that you're just going to now start living and doing what I tell you to do. Because you know that the, you know, and, and as you think about the, the, the will of the Father, it's for you to come into his fullness, for you to experience the best. And, and so you think of it from, oh, yeah. God, I love you so much because you love me. We were saying that song, oh, how he loves us. And, as, and, and the more that we get a revelation of how much he, he loves us and the, mo, the more that he wants us to know him and to experience him, the more we just move into this kind of this yes mentality like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Like that's the real shift that happened in mine and Jennifer's life back in, 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 uh, in 2011. It's as we got an understanding of the goodness of God, of the love of God, and just said, man, this is awesome. Then like keeping the commandments or keeping whatever God said or doing it is just second nature. Like I haven't ever once said, I need to do what God says to show him how much I love him. I don't even think that way. I just love him so much because he's loved me that I just going to do what he says. But here's what it says. He says, I will, my father and I, we will, we will uh, show. He says, I will show myself to him and I will let myself be clearly seen. It's in that place of perfect communion that you begin to see Jesus. You begin to experience him. You begin to, and I, so I just kind of took this to the Lord and I said, you know what? You promised it, so I want to see you. You promised it, so I want to see you, Father. Jesus, I want to see you. I'm going to hold you to your word. That's pretty, pretty audacious. Like, so many of you here tonight probably, you'd say, well, I've never seen Jesus, like, with my eyes or anything like that. But, you know, there was, uh, um, the, and the, the more, the more I, I, I grow with God, the more I see him in everything, first of all. But there was a moment, which you guys have heard me tell the story, there was a moment when I was dealing with night terrors, um, when the Lord gave, showed me and, and took me through a process of deliverance from them. And, and the last time it happened was 20 some odd years ago when Jennifer was pregnant with Seth. And in, as I was sleeping and I had a night terror come in and these demonic spirits, and I just said, in the name of Jesus. And when I did, everything changed. And the room became white the atmosphere was so thick, like it was water, like it was liquid, and it was thick. It was a physical thing, but it wasn't water. It was love. It was love. Like you could, love is a physical force. It's not a feeling. And in that moment, Jesus appeared. So see, this scripture has become very real to me. Jesus appeared. And he told me three things. He said, they're gone, talking about those demonic spirits. They'll never bother you again, and I have to go now. And I woke up, and it was 24 years ago, I think it was, or 23 or so, and I've never had another one since. Now, that's awesome. Praise God. I didn't have to suffer with that for the rest of my life. But Jesus wants to make himself very, very real to you. Lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Lord, I pray that as we continue on tonight, Lord, for those who, who want it, for those who desire, for those who, who say, I'm ready to experience a deeper relationship with the Father. I want to know you more. I want to experience you more. Jesus, you promised, you would say, you said that as, as we move into this place of, of real relationship, of real love between each other, that in that, that in that place, you said you make yourself clearly seen, that you'll manifest yourself. And so in the name of Jesus, I just pray for everybody here and watching by live stream. Reveal yourself. Help them see you more clearly. In Jesus' name, help them see and have faith and an expectation that what you said you would do and the possibility that it is possible to see you and to have such an image of who you are that, that, that it gets burned in their consciousness, burned in their heart, and that that becomes the, the dominant picture and the focus of their life because of your love for them in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you tonight when you leave this place, leave with the expectation of Jesus revealing himself to you. Hallelujah. And hold on to it. Grab on to it. Don't just say, well, I hope it happens. No. Have an expectation that this is the relationship you're moving into with Jesus and with the Father. Go back to John 17. He said in verse 6, I have manifested your name. I have revealed your name to them. Whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. They have kept your word. And now they have known that all things that you have given me are from you. Um, in verse 9, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. So you see this perfect working together, this perfect union of Jesus and the Father. And he says, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep them, guard them through your name. Notice this. Keep them, guard them through your name, those you have given me, that they may be one as we are. Now, this is powerful. First of all, what Jesus is praying is that we would have the same union with the Father and with Jesus that Jesus and the Father has. Okay? Okay? So, I've said these, some of these things before, but in your picture, how one, uh, in your mind, how one do you think Jesus and the Father are? How perfectly in sync are they? How perfectly do they know each other's will? How perfectly do they commune with each other? Because so many times we go through life feeling separated, thinking separated, and we will try to do things on our own. And if a problem arises, whatever it is, we will we'll say, okay, I'll handle it. But when I can't handle it, that's when I kind of go to God who's sitting on the throne. So let me, let me kind of climb the stairs away from my current circumstances and situations and in this natural world. And let me try to connect spiritually to God for a brief moment. It's almost like I want to uh, pick up my cell phone and say, okay, let me call them. Let me see if I can get them on the phone. Let me see if maybe I can have a FaceTime session with them. Let's talk through some things, and then we'll hang up, and I'll go back to my life. And oftentimes, that's how we feel in our relationship with God. And I would ask you, do you think that Jesus had that kind of relationship? Do you think day by day, as he went from city to city, as he healed people, as he did things or whatever, do you think that he was ever out of relationship with the Father? Do you think that there was a moment 
except for the one moment on the cross, do you think that there was ever a moment that he felt disconnected from God or that he thought that, okay, well, let me go, let me, let me go talk to my Father in heaven and see if I can get some information. Do you think, or do you think that he was always aware of the Spirit of God, that he was always aware of, of, of the Father in his presence? Do you think he was always in perfect communion with the Father? Do you think that when Jesus prayed this, that they may be one the way that we are, that perhaps what he was doing was painting a picture for us of what daily life should be like? That we would be in that place of perfect communion with the Father and, and, and a 24-hour, if you will, awareness of the Father's presence and the Father's voice. Do you think it's possible for us to live that kind of life? Do you think it's possible, let me rephrase, do you think it's possible for you to live that kind of life? Or do you think that it, if you think it's possible, how long do you think it'll get to that place? It'll take you to get to that place. Does anybody want to put a date on it? Does anybody want to tell me, is it, is it days, is it months, is it years? I'm not getting a lot of feedback tonight. Can I tell you that there's always a, there's always a place to grow from, but can I tell you that because of the change that happened in mine and Jennifer's life uh, in 2011 and the growth that we've had in him, that in reality that I'm aware of the Father all the time now that I have learned. So we talked last week a little bit about spiritual sight. We talked about that there is, that there, there's, there's another side uh, that why, the Bible says, while we don't look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. In other words, there's a way for us to see beyond the natural. Okay, so many people get upset. So many people get angry about what's going on in our nation, what's going on around the world, what other people are doing, because they are only responding to what's happening naturally. So they're re you're receiving information, you're receiving, you're you're watching the news, you're receiving all of this, and it's making you angry. Does anybody resemble that remark? Man, we got a bunch of liars here tonight. Okay. All right. I just need to know where we are. I just need to know if I need to be casting out spirit demons of lying or what the deal is. What kind of deliverance is going to happen tonight? No, I mean, so we deal with this from a natural, but do you know that as you're getting information from the natural, there is also information coming from the spiritual. There is always, there's this and there's this, and which one are you giving attention to? Okay, because you can hear this. You know, Jesus said, be careful what you hear, right? And so, and to take heed to what you hear. So what you are filling your heart with and what you're listening to all the time is going to actually kind of determine what your outlook is going to determine your mood. It's going to determine your focus. It's going to determine kind of the course of your life. But not only did Jesus say, take heed to what you hear, but he said, take heed how you hear. How you hear is just as, if not more important than what you hear. Because how you hear, because there's some things you can't help hearing, but how you filter that, how, how it comes into you, how, how you respond to it, you know, it's, it's like two people can hear the same news. It's kind of like the children of Israel. Here they are. They sent 12 spies into the land of Canaan. Let's go see this land that was flowing with milk and honey. Let's go see what God had promised us. Their assignment was just to bring a report back of what God had said. That was it. They get back and 10 of them Gave, went beyond their assignment instead of reporting on the land they also said and we are not able to overcome it they began to they began to also tell the children of Israel what they could not do they were never assigned to do that that wasn't their mission that wasn't their call to tell somebody else whether they're able to do it or not they were not supposed to speak for God 
what they were supposed to do was give a report of the land. Joshua and Caleb said, come on, we are well able to overcome it. And so you had 12 people seeing the same thing and 10 of them said, we can't do it. And two of them said, come on, let's do it. What's the difference? It's not what they saw and it's not how they heard. I mean, it's not what they saw and what they heard, but it was how they processed it because they processed what was coming in and what they were seeing through what God had said and what God had said was more important, had more value in their life than what they were seeing. So they, they felt like, you know, they, they, they saw a city. And they, as they saw this walled city, you have 10 of them saying, oh, I don't know how we're going to break down that walled city. I don't know how we're going to beat COVID. I don't know what, how, what the election's going to do. I don't know this. And, and they look at the enormousness of it. And then, they, and then they see the people and they're like, oh my God, there's giants there. Now what are we going to do? I've never seen that before. We heard that there are giants, but my goodness, we can't do it. And so they responded fully from the natural. Joshua and Caleb, what they're doing is they're seeing the walled city and saying, you know what? My house, that house right over there, that's my house. And Caleb's like, that mountain over there, that's going to be my mountain. That's where, like, like they weren't even thinking about what they could not do. Oh, get this. They weren't looking at it to say, can we do it? Joshua and Caleb went in and said, well, this is already ours, so I want to start looking at what is mine. They started picking out their place. They started picking out where they were going to, you know, and, and thinking about what it was going to look like. You get to do that. You have an opportunity right now, child of God, in this moment because the Father is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is leading you. He is guiding you every place you go, every job opportunity that you get into. I mean, I'm telling, I'm telling you, wherever you go and every possibility and whoever you come in, you should not come in, you know, saying, man, I hope this works out for me. Or you shouldn't, like if, 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 if your boss brings to you a, um, man, jeez, uh, uh, I'm sorry for just a second. Hold on. <laughs> this is funny. Why in the world would you interrupt me right in the middle of good preaching, Holy Spirit? Okay, it's up to you. Um, you know, the Bible says, you know, to te we test all things, but... Uh, uh, Tim Yeager, um, what, what the Spirit of God was just, uh, just showing me, and just, just be ready, ready for it, is there may be some um, over in the next three months, some opportunities that come your way that, that in the natural doesn't even seem possible. Like, like that you, you know, like you've had, you've had a word that, you know, that you're going to do more with less, and all of that's come to pass, and God has blessed you and all of that. But it seems like to me that on the horizon is, is, uh, is something that in the natural, um, it, 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 looks like, it looks like way bigger than anything that you've done in the past. I, I don't know. I just, I just keep seeing this. You know, that it's almost like this story with the children of Israel going in um, that is like, oh, this is impossible, this is impossible, this is impossible. And that the way, and, and that if you're not cautious, that um, you, that, that you will, that, that if you don't come at it with the right perspective, thank you, Father, for how to say this, um, you could pass up an opportunity because of the size of it. Because you think, mm, I don't know that we're ready for something like this. You know, and I don't know if I want to take on something this, this big as it's being presented to you. Or you could, you could just come in and like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. We're going to do it. And you start thinking of it more from a place of you, it's already yours instead of how do I make it mine? Does that make sense? Yeah, so anyway, just take that for what it's worth and pray it out. So anyway, um, so that's the thing. You start from a place like Joshua and Caleb. Are you going to be a Joshua and Caleb? You know? Um, Toby, are you going to be a Joshua and Caleb? Start thinking of it from, from that place. 
what is going on tonight, man? God's just giving me some things for different people. Praise God. Um, yeah, so, so, so same for you, man. Um, you know, just the, you know, I know that you, you guys have been in somewhat of a season, you know, I guess you can call it that. It's been, it's been interesting, but, um, uh, just be, just be ready. Like this season that you guys have been in, you're coming out of like you're, you're already, you're already on the way out. Does that make sense? And, and that in that, that some of the dreams and some of the things that God has placed in your heart is time to, uh, um, like, don't, don't continue to say, okay, that's going to be at some point, but I need to keep maintaining where we are in this season and try to make sure that everything comes out. It's like you can catch a, a surfer, will, a surfer, a good surfer knows the wave and catches the wave before it becomes the wave. You know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll see it, they'll feel it, they'll sense it. And what they'll do is they'll go ahead and get ready for it. And so that they're ready to catch the wave. And that's what I see with you guys, that, that right now, um, that the wave is beginning to form. And so don't wait till whatever that looks like. And we can talk about these things later. Uh, but I just hear the Lord say, get ready now. That you're, that you're already in that transition out and into the new. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Praise God. All right. Let's just keep going here for a moment. Um, thank you, Jesus. So, so, are you a Joshua and Caleb? How you hear, how you see, makes all the difference. What's your perspective? What is your perspective? Let's go back. Let's finish this in John 19. So, he said this. Again, verse 11. Now I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. I come to you. Keep them through your name. So, our, we are kept, we are guarded through the name of the Father, through that relationship. That's that place. That relationship is what guards us. You hear that? If you're thinking about God, I'm coming to you, I would say, rephrase and say, Father, didn't Jesus say, pray this way? Father, who's in heaven, holy be your name. In other words, there's a recognition. You're not, just, you're not just formally addressing him. You're not just saying this is the right prayer to pray. What you're doing is, you know, when my kids come to me and say, hey, dad, can you help me with this? What does he say? What, what are they saying? They're, they're, re, they're, they're appealing to me out of relationship. They're appealing to me out of my love for them. Does that make sense? Okay, so same thing. Father, thank you. Father, I love you. Father, in, in that relationship, I am absolutely kept. I am absolutely guarded. And then he says, um, let's see. I'm just going to keep going down here, hit a few things. In verse 13, but now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So all of this is so that we could experience joy, experience joy. In verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. He's not saying take them out. He's not saying let's bring them to heaven. He said, but, I, but that you should keep them, guard them from the evil one. Man, the father uh, in that relationship, so when you're talking about being kept, being guarded, man, you get to a place that the wicked one can't touch you. That's what the Father's doing. In that relationship and in that place, there is such a presence. You are so surrounded. Man, the wicked one, the evil one cannot touch you. So I don't have to be worried. I'm not worried about COVID. I'm not worried about everything going on. I'm not worried about all of these things. None of it's going to touch me. None of it's going to harm me in the name of Jesus. Okay? And so I just believe that. He says, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them. Again, cleansed, separate sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And so as you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the Father, or into the world. So the, the, the point is this. How did Jesus get sent? What did he do? You've been sent the same way. And so for their sakes, I sanctify. And then look at verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Look at verse 21. 
that they all may be one. That we all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also, oh man, that they also may be one in us. Again, I'm going to read again. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, and they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent them. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. So all the glory that Jesus had has been given to us. Man, this is awesome. I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Now look at this. I'm not going to um, finish this out, but I want you to see this last part here, this, this verse we just read. I mean, just look at this. I in them. So Jesus in us. You in me. So if the Father is in Jesus and Jesus is in us, the Father is in us. Look at this. That they may be made perfect in this oneness, in this union. And so out of this, that the world may know that you have sent me, and then I love this last phrase, and have loved them as you have loved me. Look at this. Think about it. Jesus demonstrated to the world what it was like to be the son of his father. Jesus demonstrated to the world. David, I'm going to get you to come on up. De Jesus um, demonstrated to the world um, how much the father loved him. Do you all understand this? That he said, whatever I ask the father, he gives me. In other words, Jesus lived his life in a way. If you looked at John chapter five, Jesus lived his life in a way that, that he said, I, 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 I'm doing what I see the father do. There was such a relationship there and you're, you're good to go anytime. There was such a relationship there that, that and such a unity and such a oneness that man, the people saw what it was like to be a son. What it was like to be a son. Do you know that that same level of oneness, that same level of relationship, like is this, is this tilt? Is this too much for you guys? Is this too much to think that we can experience the same relationship with the Father that Jesus did while he walked on the earth? Does that seem like that's way too far out there? Does it seem like, oh man, that's impossible. I can't be like Jesus. Really? You know that, we, that we're in union with him. Like we're so in union. We're the same way that Jesus is with the Father in our spirit. The problem is, is that we, will, we live from a natural identity. Our identity is rooted in what people think about us and what happens and what we see and all, and all of this natural. And so, and, and so we see about ourselves, we experience about, we respond out of all of this instead of being so aware of Him and that oneness. How do you get to this place? Okay, so this is where we're going to kind of transition, start moving into some activate. Thank you, Father. How, how do you move into this place? Well, first of all, one of the things that you can do practically is what I mentioned in Psalm 92. In the morning, start talking about the mercies and the goodness of God. Make that the first part of your day. Make a decision, man, I'm going to be aware of the Father. In Colossians 3, it says, as we set our affections on things above, that we have to keep them set there. And as we do that, because that's where our life is, it's hid in Christ. And as you do that, so what do I do? During the day, I'll just, um, you know, in that, in that space between a phone call, in that space between, or if I'm driving from one place to another, you know, I just start singing, holy, 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 holy Father. 
Start singing in the spirit. Gorana se le bokoranana. Yemana se ila bore. Yelamande koramande. See, as you move into these, this place of just singing and just worshiping and just meditating in those moments, get used to some stillness. We're so busy in our lives. We, 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 you know, we schedule everything. We do everything. Like we're not used to silence. We're, um, we're ADD now. We have an ADD society that we're not used to still. We're not used to those moments. We're not used to these spaces. And so, you know, you know the word that it was in the still small voice where, where the word of God was found. So it's not in the busyness and in the activity. It's in your stillness. Oh, Lord, that's where we find your peace. And that's where we experience your joy. That's where we find you in that moment of stillness, in that moment of peace, in that moment of stillness. I think there's a place where it says, be still, oh my soul. Sometimes we have to start settling down a little bit. And to begin with, it's not easy. Some of you here, it's just like your brain is active all the time. I know what that's like. I'm thinking all the time. My mind is going all the time. Very active in my imagination. Very active in my thinking. But what's happened is because of these kinds of things, you know, you may say, well, I don't know how to sing in the Spirit. Well, then just start singing. Take Scripture. And you could just say, you know, you could take Psalm 23, for instance. You know, something that talks about the goodness of God. You know, and just make it up. And just say, the Lord is my shepherd. And I will never, ever want. The Lord is my shepherd. And he leads me and he guides me. And what will happen is as you start singing, as you start talking, as you start going through it, you'll start deviating. You'll start focusing on him. Jesus would get up early in the morning and he would go and pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And what will happen is you realize you are one with the Father. You are loved by him. There is an awareness that will come over you that when you're doing a transaction, when you're doing a business deal, that when you're doing your work, you just all of a sudden, it's like you, it's not, you're no longer natural, but now there's natural and there's supernatural and it all works together. And that's where, and that's where I walk. That's where I walk. Even if in a moment I don't feel the presence of God, it does. in a moment, I'm right there. You need to get to a place that in a moment you experience the presence of God. Some of you, 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 this is all new to you. So this is why we're doing Wednesday Activate a little bit. Okay? In this environment, it's easy. It's easy. We're going to take just a moment um, to sing, to sing a little bit. I just really feel impressed by the Spirit of God. Um, let's let's just do that for a moment. You know, let's, um, hmm, how, how do we do this in a way that makes it comfortable for you guys? Um, we'll give everybody a microphone. I'm just kidding. You know, let's, um, David, let's do this. Let's go. Let's go to uh, G. So let's let's get into let's get into a familiar pattern for just a second with just this last course that we did. How great is our God? And then we're just going to move into some singing for just a moment. And then we're going to do a, a, another little thing for activate to have other people begin to share for just a moment. Okay? But can y'all um, let's do this? Stand with me, please. And the reason we're doing this, guys, my heart's desire is to is is for you to come into this knowing, this union, this relationship with God, that you're constantly aware of Him. And I'm telling you it's possible. 
because I know that's what happens. That's just the way I live my life now. And before my life was like this, it was like, you know, man, I need to think God thoughts. I need to be, you know, I need to focus on him. God, I'd love to hear from you and that sort of thing. And so you had these flashes and these moments, but there is a way that you move into this awareness of him all the time. And your default, your default is not to try to fight against the anger or fight against the bad thoughts or fight against the bad news. Your default now is as the news comes, then the waters of the grace of God and the news that comes from Him just washes over it and it just leaves you in a place of peace and rest so you're not all beside yourself about what's going on, okay? So let's do this. Let's just sing, How Great Is Our God, just the chorus. We're going to sing it twice, and then we're going to move into, and when we move into after the second time, I want you to kind of hold that G for just a moment, and then we'll probably hit that kind of that one, four, six thing, okay? All right, so we're just doing some instruction, okay? Thanks, David, so much for, for doing this. So how great, let's all sing together, is our God. Sing with me how great. Is our God, and all will see how great and how great is our God. Let's sing it again one more time. How great is our God? Come on, let it out. And how great is our God? And sing with me. Just begin just to just to sing. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Oh Father, how great you are. Mighty, mighty, mighty is your name. worship you and we worship you our king mighty 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 is your name thank you father lord we worship you and we magnify you for you are mighty glorious and you love us and you love us and you love us and you love us come on that's right there and you love us and you love us change it to me yes Lord you love me oh Lord you love me you love me Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your glory. You deliver me because you are mighty. And I have victory because you're mighty. me will be successful because greater is he greater is he greater are you my God greater are you greater are you greater are you than my situation greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world than what's going on in the world tonight and what's going on in my life tonight you are greater you are greater you are greater than any enemy you are greater than the 
sickness that I felt you are greater than the emotion that I've experienced you are greater greater is he that is in me than anything that's happening around That's all I see, Lord. You are greater, greater, greater. So now there's no fear in me. No fear in me, because your love is greater, greater. No worry in me. No worry in me, cause you are greater, greater. There's no fear in me, no fear in me. You are greater, Lord, you're greater. No depression in me, no depression. In me, Lord, you are greater. Yes, you are. There's no fear in me, no fear in me. Father, you are greater. You are greater. There's no sickness in me. There's no sickness in me. Father, I even thank you that as we just kind of step into this simple exercise of learning to sing to you, of learning to sing in the Spirit, of letting you sing through us, Holy Spirit, to bring us into a new place, new vision, new thought that we can be free, just free in you. Thank you that in these places, in this time of communion, Lord, that our eyes become open to you, that we begin to experience that oneness, that union, that relationship, that love, that love, your love towards us, your love, your tangible presence and your love in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you.